and your children are old and married off and they're picking out your nursing home, <laughs> you wish you'd have loved her more than you did them. Our marriages are important. Yes, Marriage is not a game. It is very sacred. In fact, outside of the church of Jesus Christ, there's nothing more sacred to the heart of God than when a man and a woman come together yes, in holy matrimony. Amen. Someone asked me one time, why are men, young men, so nervous at their wedding? I, I've seen them pass out. I've heard their knees knock together. Grown big bubba guys just, well, number one, they're about to choke to death in that tuxedo they're in. But someone said, why do you think they're so nervous? Well, man, think about the words we're making the guy use. Better or worse. Richer for poor. Health and sickness. And then we really get him and use the word death. <laughs> to death do you, but it's serious. Yes, and so I want to talk to you about a man and his marriage. Look at this text this morning in James chapter number 3. He's dealing with a wonderful thing called wisdom. And in verse 17 and verse 18, he gives an eightfold description of wisdom, eight characteristics of wisdom. And I would encourage you to study those. It would be a blessing to you, but I want to deal with one of them. Notice what James says in chapter 3, verse 17. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure peaceable, gentle, easy to be entreated, full of mercy, and good fruits, and here's without partiality, and here's the one I want to deal with, without, say it with me, hypocrisy. Say that with me again, without hypocrisy. The word hypocrisy in the Greek comes from a word that means to masquerade, to hide behind the mask. It refers to those Greek actors that would act out a play behind the mask so nobody really knew who they was. Hiding behind the mask. Hypocrisy. It is the opposite of the word revealed. It is the opposite of the word manifest, which means to take down the mass. It means portraying something that you're really not. The old timers used to tell me, you might as well be yourself because the real you is going to come out sooner or later. But I thought about this. How does this hypocrisy, how does this hiding behind the mask, how does this role play, how does this acting something you're not, how does that refer to our marriage? Well, after 33 years pastoring the same church, I've done a little bit, a little bit of counseling troubled families. And I thought about this the other day. Of all the families and all the troubled marriages for 33 plus years, we've tried to help and mend together. You can take it all back most of the time to somebody hiding behind the man. Somebody playing the part of something that they're really not. And I wrote down a six or seven roles or six or seven masks or six or seven things that we do not need to portray or play or hide behind a mask in our marriage. Number one, you don't need to play judge. You don't need to play the role of a judge. You don't need to hide behind the mask of a judge. And you say, what does that mean? Well, in a marriage, the judge will say, you always. You never. I feel. You shouldn't. Man, your wife doesn't need to be married to a judge. She needs to be married to an advocate. Most broken families come from somebody wearing the mask of a judge. Don't play judge in your marriage. 
She doesn't deserve a judge. She needs a friend. So don't hide behind the role of a, or the mask of a judge. Number two, I wrote this one down. Don't play the role or hide behind the mask of a professor. That's somebody who uh, knows it all. That is somebody who talks down and acts superior or says to one, you're stupid. That was stupid. That was dumb. You ought to know better. She doesn't deserve to be married to a professor because we don't know as much as we think we do. Can I get a good witness right now? And if you are wearing that role or hiding behind that mask of a professor and talk down to her and condescend to her, it will greatly wound and afflict your communication. Number three, I wrote this one down. Don't masquerade. Don't play the role. Don't hide behind the mask of a psychiatrist. A psychiatrist analyzes everything too much. And a psychiatrist said, well, I know what you're thinking. I know why you said that. I know why you did that. I know all about you. She doesn't need to be married to a psychiatrist. She needs to be married to a sympathizer. Don't hide behind that role of a psychiatrist. I dealt with a broken family not long ago, and this man's greatest problem, and I told him, he overanalyzes everything. One of the greatest revelations in life is when it dawns on you, there are just some things you're never going to figure out. And the more you try to figure it out, and the more you try to analyze it, the worse it gets. There are some things you just have to let go and let God deal with. So don't hide behind the judge of a psychiatrist. Then I wrote this one down. Here's another mask. Here's another role some married couples play. Don't masquerade or hide behind the mask of a historian. That's one who says, bless God, I remember. It was on a Wednesday, 4 o'clock in the afternoon, 95 degrees, and raining when you said that. I remember... I need to correct you. I never forget a historian. Got all the facts, never forgets anything. Now you say, I thought that was a woman. Yeah, but we do it too. In fact, a woman can remember something that happened 99,000 years ago. If it's bad. And forget something good that happened three seconds ago. You done forgot it and moved on. She's still stewing about it. But men do it too. The historian. Don't hide behind the mask of a historian. Let Just forget it and move on. And he'll always constantly remind her of the weather report when she said something she shouldn't have said. Hiding behind the mask of the historian. Here's a good one. I wrote this one down. Don't masquerade or play the role of a dictator. You say, what's a dictator do? I demand. I'm putting my foot down. And it leads to physical and emotional abuse. Now you say, don't you believe the Bible? I sure do. Don't you believe that Bible when it said that man is the head of the house? Yes, sir, I believe it. But I also believe the other part where it said love your wife even as Christ loved the church. If you want to croak about what the Bible says, move on from that first one and get to that second one. Well, the Bible said she ought to submit to me. And the Bible said she ought to obey me. Yeah, and the Bible says you ought to love her as Christ. Yes, love the church. Right. I don't know the phrase you would use out here in California, but over in Georgia we'd say, that's something right there. Amen. 
Because he loved the church so much that he put the church and he died for the church. Don't play the role of a dictator. I demand you better. I mean it. And emotional and physical abuse. Don't hide behind the role of the dictator. Don't masquerade behind that. I wrote this one, and it's pretty good. Don't hide behind the mask or play the role of a parent. You're not her father, and she is not your mother. Nobody wants to be married to their parent unless they're psychologically messed up. Hello? Amen. Don't hide behind the mask of a parent. We're not fathers and mothers to each other. We are sweethearts. We're husband and wife and not mama and daddy. Amen. Don't hide behind the role of a parent. Now this one will probably get me in trouble, but I'm leaving in a minute, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> Don't play the role or hide behind the mask of a preacher. Don't play the role of preacher. You say, well, I'm a man of God, and I'm a preacher. Wonderful. Preach. But not at her. Love her. Help her. Try to understand her. Realize that she doesn't have the calling on her like you've got on you. And she's not your assistant pastor. Us Baptists, man, we really preach hard against those denominations that ordain women to preach, and most pastors have ordained their wife as their assistant. We're having fun today, aren't we? Don't hide behind the role of a preacher. Be a man of God if you're a preacher, but learn to use the Bible correctly. Let me clarify it with this. Don't use the Bible as your bully pulpit and continually pound her over the head with verses. How, how many believe that it takes God to save a sinner? How many believe it takes God through the conviction of the Holy Spirit to draw a man to Jesus Christ? I believe that. Without conviction, there's no conversion. Man, that's right there in the book. So therefore, it takes God to open somebody's eyes to the truth. You believe that? Well, if it takes God to open a person's eyes to the truth, it takes God to open your wife's eyes to the truth. Stand for what's right. Do what's right. Read the Word of God and make that your sole rule of authority. But at the same time, be wise and be careful. The Bible is a very powerful book. And in the hands of someone who has got it out of context, it can become very dangerous. In fact, if you really want to, you can take the Bible and take it out of context. It becomes a pretext, and you can make it say something that it really doesn't mean. The Bible said that Judas went out and hanged himself. The Bible also says, go thou and do likewise. And it also says, what thou doest, do as quickly. That doesn't mean everybody runs out real quick and hangs themselves. You have to be careful. That's why I believe the most dangerous thing in the world is a false prophet. I believe the most dangerous thing in the world is a false preacher. I believe the most dangerous thing or person in the world is a man who takes a Bible and twists it. Because he's playing not with people's minds, but with their soul. And inevitably, their eternal destiny. So be careful in your marriage when you use the Bible. She's not married to Mr. Preacher. And don't use the Bible as a bully pulpit. So take down the mask. Don't have any hypocrisy. Be real, be true, be authentic, and be what God would have you to be. So therefore, don't hide behind the mask of the judge. 
Don't hide behind the mask of the professor. Don't hide behind the mask of the psychiatrist. Don't hide behind the mask of the historian. Don't hide behind the mask of the dictator. Don't hide behind the mask of a parent. And don't hide behind the mask of a preacher. Because the Bible said real wisdom. That wisdom that is from above. That wisdom is from God is without hypocrisy. It is without the mass. I often tell people this, that's in false religion and in the contemporary movement or whatever you want to put on it. Why should we settle for something that is phony, false, fleeting, and fake when we've got the real thing there? Why would you ever substitute homemade biscuits for brown and serve roll? Why would you ever substitute mashed potatoes with the lumps in it than for the little dangerous stuff with water poured on it, stirred in a bowl and nuked to catsa in the microwave? Why settle for the false, the fleeting, the phony, and the fake when we can have reality? Your home doesn't need to be a play that's played out on the stage of false and fake. Your family doesn't have to be a front of something that it's really not behind the scenes. Marriage is also being married is awesome. Having a godly family is a treasure and a privilege. Having a marriage that is true and honest and wholesome and holy, that mirrors God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit is an awesome thing. And I know that in our society that Along with the church and the Bible, the home is under a tremendous assault. It is scoffed. It is taken very lightly. But God said in the Bible that it is honorable. And I believe that God instituted the family before he did the church. And I believe our marriages and our relationship with our spouses is very important. I believe it's hard for a, especially a pastor, to leave the families in his church farther than his own relationship with his wife. I believe young people today need a role model of marriage like they've never needed it before. Because if our young people in our churches, if the conception of marriage is all they have is what they see in the entertainment world, that's not good. If the only conception of marriage is what they see on the television and in society and the modern educational systems of our day, it's not very good. May they see a real man and a real woman that's honest and holy and pure. Live in the Bible, walk, walk with God and love each other and raise a godly family for the glory of God. Amen. I've often made this statement preaching on the home and talking about marriage. What profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own family. What hypocrisy it would be to win millions of people and make millions of dollars and have millions of friends. And the people we love and cherish the most, we lose that relationship. Fellas, God gave us our wives to love, to cherish, to honor, to lift up, 
to help, to nurture, to be a blessing to. She doesn't need for you and I to masquerade and play roles that we're not. Let her see your true heart for God. Let her see your true love for her. And let's put down the mask and let's get away with the hypocrisy and be real. Be real. She really doesn't care how much we know until she knows how much we care. She needs to know that you love her and she's number one outside of Jesus Christ in your life. She needs to feel more important than your buddies. She needs to feel more important than your hobbies. And she needs to feel more important than your ministry. Because according to the Bible, when we lose our family, We've lost it all. Because I believe the world needs to see what Christian marriage and Christian families really are. And if we don't take down the mask and put masquerading behind something that we're really not, we're not going to be able to accomplish that goal for the glory of God. I'll tell you something that's very scary to me. I love preaching on the characters of the Bible. And some of the greatest characters in the Bible, they were great military men. They were even some great spiritual leaders. Some were great kings. Some had great wisdom as the dear brother preached about Solomon. Some were the strongest men in all the Bible, mentally, emotionally, physically, and even spiritually. But they were sorry husbands and sorry family men. I was in a preacher's meeting the other day, and my wife happened to be with me sitting at the group of table at a table with a group of guys. And one guy spoke up and said, I just tell you right now, I'm not a family man. I'm just not a family man. I'm all in the ministry. I'm just not a family man. And Mrs. Arthur, Mrs. Sweet, submissive, quiet, dignified, presbyterian, Lutheran. Catholic, Mrs. Arthur, came out of her shell and said, Brother, if I was you, I wouldn't brag about that. <laughs> and we got in the car and she kissed me, praise God, right square down in the mouth. <laughs> and she said, thank you for being a preacher. Thank you for being a pastor. Thank you for being a spiritual leader. But well, she said that kiss, baby, was for being a daddy and being a husband. I said, if you'll kiss me like that again, I'll be a better husband. <laughs> Take down the mask. Don't masquerade. Don't be something that you're not. Be genuine. Be real. Because inevitably, they know better. And they know who we really are. Like I said, I'm not an expert. And I don't want a target upon my back. But I do know this this morning. I am what I am. And I am where I am. Because of Jesus. And my sweetheart. I don't want to lose her. I don't want to lose my family. The price is too high. The cost is too great. You need her. You need her. You need her. And she needs you. And together, you can have a family that brings glory and honor to the name of Jesus Christ. Your children deserve it. Lost sinners need to see it. And it pleases the Lord. Let's pray.